Oops. It's on the grounds. I don't wow. know where precisely it is. Um, wow. Um, there's a little lake there, yeah. and then it's sort of in the back, and it was just raw forest. And, uh, yeah. and there were some big trees there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enough to the... They looked up. Yeah. And you know the Pacific Northwest well, right? You have a history here. I got something here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's... That might be mine. Your hair? Yes. <laughs> if it's gray, you're the only, that's you know, the only that's person me. who I've touched today who has gray hair. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You, you, do you still have a home in Sandpoint? Uh, near there. Okay. Yeah. So you uh, talk about that a little bit. I mean, the Pacific Northwest, for one of our other reporters um, interviewed you years ago and said that you talked about sailing the Puget Sound and that that was something you really enjoyed mm -hmm. doing. Um, yeah, I used to live in the woods, basically, <laughs> in, in, in uh, northern Idaho. And so the physical aspect of where the movie starts was I was comfortable with it and I was happy there, you know, and it was familiar, the trees and everything. And you too, you've yeah. lived up in Oregon. I grew around. up in Oregon. Yeah, part of this was based on your upbringing to a degree, maybe not to this degree, but... It's not autobiographical. There are a few autobiographical elements. Uh, at one point in my life, we lived in a teepee in the summertime. That's in the movie. Um, uh, I certainly lived in the middle of the woods. Um, uh, I celebrate Noam Chomsky Day, which I believe I invented, <laughs> and everyone should celebrate. And I say that actually with a smile on my face. December seventh. I mean it. Yes. <laughs> December is it ninth? I think it's is it seventh or the ninth? God, it was the seventh. I, I, you know, I'm tied to my iPhone like all of us. <laughs> it will tell me. My iPhone knows. Um, uh, and I think also when I th when I think about it a lot, the other autobiographical element is really. I was the teenage boy who needed to leave and, and kind of seek his fortune in the world, which happens in the movie with the George sure. Mackay character. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling palpably that I wanted to not live in the middle of nowhere uh, my entire life. Sure. You know, that I felt the need to go beyond the forest. Um, but the rest is just about me uh, finding a way to um, contextualize a lot of questions I had about being a parent and put it in kind of a dramatic form. and mm -hmm. and um, and. Wanting to be Viggo Mortensen when I grow up. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit of that, maybe. Who? Oh, I'm grown up, Dan. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> you really embody so much of this character. It's almost like it was written for you. Your comfortability in the woods. First off, is it true that you didn't stay in the hotel room that they provided for you? That sometimes no, you preferred to stay in the forest. I mean, the, in the rehearsal period, there was a couple you weeks. Were, I did. I did stay out there because I was putting in the garden and he built the garden. Uh, and getting used to, it. yeah, and just mm -hmm. like I mean, I, as for Matt, I mean, it was we realized that we had a short period of time to shoot that beginning to establish where they lived and for it to be really believable, mm -hmm. which we all wanted, mm -hmm. and everybody, you know, it was a great team <clears throat> from the designer to you know er, the people who did the construction there. Everybody wanted it to look like realistic that we could live that way. In the middle of the woods, without any electricity, without any, that it would be sustainable way to live, and and because if that works, then by contrast, everything else will work in in, in the movie, and uh, and I think it turned out to be a great place, and and that's why I think the the people there when they saw it, they said, "Wow, we like this. We want to yeah. keep it, yeah. can't we?" Yeah, yeah. And I guess you know, you, you probably the production had to say, "Well, we're not liable if you get hurt." Right. Right. <laughs> you know? Some things are. I mean, th there's an outhouse because that's when you when you. Yeah. When you live with in the middle of nowhere, and when you're off the grid, you know you have to deal with things like sanitation. What's your food source? Where, where you know, how do you how do you preserve your food? And mm -hmm. in the movie, you can see that they smoke fish, and um, they're cooking, and um, but they're, they jar. Um, there's actually, if you there's an outhouse. There's um, Russell Barnes, the production designer, and I talked about the possibility of, of solar power. And actually, on the garage where your baskets are, there's a little solar power, yeah. so they could possibly charge something if they needed to. And um, you know, obviously shelter, water, you know, where, how, what, what's your water source? That's a huge thing. It sure. was great, and the kids loved it, you know. As soon as they saw it, they were, you know, it was, it was, it was a great playground for yeah. us. Yeah. And it was perfect, you know, in every way for, for the movie. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I was comfortable with certain aspects of it, but that's not to say the character, there's certain things that he says and does, and um, even though his idea is to free the mind, free the body. He consistently asks kids to speak for themselves, to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, there's a democracy in that sense. <clears throat> but probably in the absence, the recent you know, departure of 
of the mother, of his wife, he probably feels, you know, at least subconsciously, more pressure to really do a good job, and he's, he's in a sense, probably trying too hard, which is better than not trying at all. Mm -hmm. and, and he becomes, I think, unwittingly somewhat authoritarian at times, you know. It's, what he wants, what he least wants to be is rigid. You know, because that's what he sees as a problem in the world, and yet he becomes a little that way. I mean, it's a movie that, it's a great script. It's one of the best scripts <coughs> that, that I've read in the sense that it's so layered. You know, each character is defined, and nobody is exactly what they seem to be at first. You know, the, the story evolves. At first you look at these people, oh, they're crazy, you know. I mean, one of the, one of the best things I've read about the character I play is, well, he's, he's likable to a degree, and he's certainly a committed parent, but he is insane, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or something like that. And I thought, well, that's about right. But the movie and forces you to, to flip to it and say, who's yeah. insane? Yeah. And the, that person yeah. or the person who lifts their kids on their iPads six that's hours well, a day? Well, but all that's those right. people, even the ones, the parents who have the kids on their iPads or their grandparents who are more conservative, nobody, no, nobody's point of view in this movie is, is uh, condemned or entirely condoned. Mm -hmm. And so people adapt in the story, and in, in, in a sense it's about communication. And that, that's what I liked about it. At first you think, okay, these, this crazy person who's educating his kids in this way, these are the heroes, we're going to follow them against their probably conservative uh, foes, and that, we'll see how they, they triumph against that adversity. But it's not that. It's not a movie you can pigeonhole and say, well, this is a liberal movie about some kind of off-the-grid existence versus right. what everybody else is doing, almost well. everyone else. It's not. It's, it's a much more complex than that. And I think the fact that self-reflection and adapting is part of the story, whether it's my character or the grandparents or my sister or the kids, you know, that I think the lesson there if there is a lesson, you know, as far as the society we actually live in now, is that if there is self-reflection, then there you can be more free, you know, and you can you can be more comfortable dealing with others. Certainly, I mean, I think one thing that's probably good for our movie, although not great for the country, is the state of affairs of society right now. You know, mm. uh, I mean, I think the presidential campaign, you know, that the, the uh, the polarized and polarizing rhetoric of the presidential campaign is only a just a, a loud echo. It's a surface mm -hmm. manifestation of a deeper problem we have, I think, and that's communication. Yeah. Yeah. People are not communicating, mm -hmm. and, and in some way, this movie, without at all being political or ideological in any way, it kind of touches on that. It's a movie mm -hmm. very much of its time in that the problems we see in the movie for the individuals and for and as a group is the difficulty with taking in what someone else has to say you know very differing points of view and the only way we're going to be able to that the country is going to be run in a decent way which it hasn't been for years um, that dialogue. we're going to be able to go, yeah, it's the mm. dialogue, it's, and you have to make some compromises. Yeah, right. and, and how do you, what kind of compromises? Right. What's too much? What's too little? Right. Well, if you don't start at least trying, you don't know what's too you much. You can't get too there. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Is that one of the reasons why, I mean, I can tell that this is your deep philosophy, regardless of what's happening in the country right now. Is that one of the reasons why you're drawn to playing so many diverse characters? I mean, here at SIF, you will be recognized with a screening of Captain Fantastic, mm -hmm. Eastern Promises. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and Walk on the Moon. Right. All very different roles. Mm -hmm. Which type of role feels like it comes the most naturally to you? I don't know. I mean, I mean, the character I've played most recently, or if I'm in the middle of preparing one, that's the one I feel the closest to at any given time. But I think just when you, if you look back, if you try to think about when you were a little girl, when you were a little boy, when I, was, I know that when I was a little boy, it wasn't just one character, it could be any character. It depended. Maybe the other kid wanted to play that character, so I would play another one. Uh, what we didn't need, you know, let's say until the age of six or eight, was a director or a second take. You were there. <laughs> you were, I am a Viking, or I am the queen of some place, you know, right. or an adventure, or a bad guy, or the, you know, Superman, whatever. 
you don't question it. You don't even need very many props. You just do it. You're, mm -hmm. you're it. And if anybody questions it, you would probably answer it in character, you know, without even... And that's something that we lose, you know, when we get older, you get, ri you get more stiff physically, so you have to do things if you want to not be stiff. Um, you have to stretch, you have to get exercise. And you mentally you get stiffer, you know, you get sort of, well, this works, this is how I can present myself in society without being locked up or being considered crazy or ostracized. So I, I stay in these parameters. As an actor, you're s s trying to keep a little bit of that childish make-believe ability. I mean, that's a necessity of the right. job. So looking at the world from different points of view. And I've played characters that I wouldn't want to meet, really. I wouldn't want to have a conversation mm -hmm. with. And then I've played, like, the character Ben in this story. I'd love to meet him, but I would probably think he was a little intense and a little bit, <laughs> as much as his knowledge about lots of things and his openness and I would be a little bit, <laughs> it, would be, it would be an interesting conversation. I would mm -hmm. like to meet him. He's not entirely like me. He's more forceful in certain areas, but I don't know. I, I think it's, I think any movie that makes you question whatever the hell you're doing, you can think, oh, well, maybe it's all wrong. Maybe I'm, you know, as the characters do at some point, is a valuable movie. And I mean, that's why I'm so, Still, you know, even though we finished shooting a long time ago and so forth, I still when I see Matt or when I see the kids as we did recently mm -hmm. in Cannes um, and at Sundance, it's a great encounter because we did have a extraordinary experience together. Mm -hmm. More than it's, it wasn't like just your average movie shoot in any way. No, no movie shoots the same, but this one was was unique. Yeah. A lot of our viewers are going to recognize you mm -hmm. from seeing you on from screen. From Lord of the Rings. From Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Lots of people <laughs> yes, didn't so know you play Gollum. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's no. A, that's Andy Serkis. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you, for me, yeah. I watch you on Silicon Valley once yes. a week as Gavin Belson. Yeah. I watched you and wanted to punch you as yes. Alvy, yes. right? Good. And Big yes. Love. Yes. You were the super creepy doctor yes. on American Horror yes. Story. Yes. Creepy is the opposite <laughs> in my career. <laughs> how, yeah. how, though, has acting lent itself to writing and directing a film because what an undertaking mm -hmm. that is to do both of those things. Well, um, I love acting. Um, I, uh, I love actors and I love uh, the... I, I think I first fell in love with theater and theater is probably more an actor's medium than film is because once the director leaves, it's really up to the actors to uh, the metabolism of it. The, the, the cutting is really up to the actors on stage. You, you, they're telling you where to look and why, and, and, and it evolves, it becomes their thing. So that was my way in. I started writing in college because I had stories I wanted to tell and things I wanted to do, and I made short films. I actually made short films when I was a child. I grew up doing theater and short films at the same time. Really horrible short films. <laughs> um, uh, and you know, I, I, I think they're related. It's, you know, it, the, the job of a director is, uh, is different than the job of an actor. You, you are in, you know, it's, it is a motion picture, so you're creating pictures to tell stories. And uh, you also, I mean, my, the reason I love it, I think, um, is because you are creating a world. Uh, you're telling a story through, and in collaboration with many artisans and craftspeople, actor, uh, the acting department is one of them. There's also the wardrobe department, and the production design, the camera department, music, um, editing, that's a whole other art. Um, I, I think it, it satisfies my desire to tell stories in a way, the way I, 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 you know, I like to, but um, I think, I think there's a there's a, a common mistake uh, that that when an actor directs that they're only interested in the acting, um, and that they're, they're you know and I think that wasn't true for many great actor directors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, Orson Welles was an extraordinary filmmaker who also came from the theater. Mm -hmm. Citizen Kane was a groundbreaking film visually. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that sometimes the mistake when I talk to people is they assume that that's all I care about is the acting. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I, I, that's a mistake. Ho however. I will also say, and I don't say this because I'm an actor, I think that most great moments in film are acting moments. And what I mean by that is that we connect with another human being revealing themselves on screen. We're not connecting with what a great costume they have or that amazing dolly shot. That stuff and the lighting, the photography should all hit us subconsciously, but you're looking at a human being revealing themselves and you're having mm -hmm. an intimate moment with someone. And, and um, uh, you know, I, I think 
maybe I have an understanding of that as an actor. I mean, I think the truth is all you great. You definitely do. A I mean, any great director understands that, you know. Yeah. Um, any well, any director that I mean, it's. But not all. Not all. I mean, another side thing to that is, I've worked with other actors, right. actor directors, and uh, it's not just that they're not only concerned about acting, but even the ones who might be. They're not always good with actors. It depends on what kind of actor you were. I mean, you kind of come. You, if you were an actor who didn't really pay much attention to what right. the other actors were doing and were only preparing your own thing, you might not be a great director of actors. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it depends. I mean, you, 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 what you obviously do enjoy <laughs> acting. You like actors, yeah, and you yeah. showed us that, and you created an atmosphere that was joyful and comfortable oh, and good. even though you knew it's an independent movie you have a limited time to shoot this mm -hmm. that there's a pressure to get the shots every yeah, day yeah. and then when you're in the woods in the northwest the weather can change all that it's all that is true but it goes back to what you But you're you didn't before. make us feel that that's you made good. us feel that's like good. it was like i was freaking fun. out inside that's good <laughs> but the, but, but acting but he, acting yeah but the, the, i was i was acting on the set um but the, what goes back very very quickly i know we have to wrap up but what you said before about the child the childlike nature of of play yeah. And that's really what it is. I, to, for me, really, it's you get all these people together, all these artisans, craftspeople, and then you invite them to play. And it, 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 it's it, directing is such the odd thing because on one hand, it needs to be supervised by a, a single vision because otherwise, but everyone is both individually adding to that collective and 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 has to be making the same movie. And it's it's such a strange kind of dichotomy of but. But ultimately, it just comes down to exploration and play, yeah. and, and 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 everyone showing up to to, to be open to that. I think. And so. they were. And this show is. You've heard of sixteen minutes. This is called ninety minutes. It's yes. called ninety yeah. minutes it's and thirty-seven be, seconds. But are, can you <laughs> we'll use edit. all this stuff? <laughs> we will use it somewhere. We'll use some of it. And we're going to do two different stories: one for Seth, and then one when the movie comes. There you out. go. So thank you so much. I really. Appreciate it.